It has been a day of protests in the capital. Thousands of demonstrators have descended on the city of London, culminating in some violent clashes with police. Tonight, we have Sky News teams live across the capital in the city, at the very heart of today's clashes, in Downing Street, where the leaders will dine tonight, in Trafalgar Square, where the Stop the War rally is underway now and at Bishop's Gate, where a climate camp has been established, even on the River Thames, with a view from a boat. First to the city, the scene of today's violence, and Sky's chief correspondent, Stuart Ramsey. Bring us up today, Stuart. Well, Jeremy, it's interesting. There's a bit of a standoff developed here, the, uh, back at the uh, bank. Um, if I we just go off and show you, you can see there's the backs of the police. There's uh, thousands of protesters on the other side of those uh, police. What's interesting is that many of them had actually left the area, but they were stopped and they were corralled and pushed back towards uh, the Bank of England that you can see uh, in the distance. It's uh, confused here as to exactly what is going to happen uh, to those protesters. I'll say there's thousands of them there. The plan, of course, of this demonstration was to bring the city of London to a standstill, and that was achieved. Thousands wanted to do it peacefully, but some wanted trouble, and they got it. The ancient streets of the city of London fill to the sounds of anger. It was predicted and promised by some. As thousands reached the Bank of England at its centre, it erupted. A battle of wills between a massive police force and smaller but determined groups of protesters, hijacking any peaceful intent and goading whenever possible. Bloodied men gesturing at the police. Crowds shouting in anger and unified chanting. It's lasted for hours, demonstrators pushing and shoving the police lines. Some trying to get onto the Bank of England steps. Others trying to get out and unite in larger numbers. Occasionally, the pushing turned more violent. A police officer smashed over the head. And demonstrators hit with truncheons as they tried to break the police lines. The bank's governor, Mervyn King, was still apparently at his desk. City workers watched as thousands passed beneath them. It's reported some waved wads of banknotes, doubtless from the safety of their offices. The Royal Bank of Scotland building fast turned into a symbolic target of the anti-capitalist demonstrators. It wasn't long before its windows were smashed. Demonstrators dancing through the shattered glass with glee. As police sensed an area was getting too dangerous, they moved in reinforcements, men and horses. The police obviously decided that this part of the Bank of England is becoming a little bit troublesome and they brought the horses in. And of course the crowd have now moved towards them which is scaring the horses and it raises the temperature if you like. As people now as the police then calm it down and try to control the crowd again. But obviously they've decided that this area of the bank is getting out of hand. Hey. Thousands of people have been involved in this first day of action. For many, it was simply a show of solidarity, not violence. Um, well, basically, it's to show soli solidarity uh, to... I mean, this particular march is to show solidarity for people who are homeless right. and also people who are kind of nationless as well. Right. So it's very much about kind of being against borders. The cause is all the same. It's the people who are pulling the strings, who are financing backing all the governments across the world, or well, the rich world anyway. But in this heated atmosphere, even the totally innocent can get drawn in so quickly. Because I think everyone's fed up with, with what's happened, really, um, with the world economy and how little democracy there is and how, how little say we actually have in how our taxes are spent. And... Oh, I don't know, there's a few skeletons going on there. Day one of the demonstrations designed to bring the city to a standstill. Many will consider this mission accomplished. But the police too will feel satisfied. Violence, yes, but totally controlled. 
a massive lockdown, expensive, but ultimately contained. Well, across the capital, there has been some trouble at a number of locations. The problem started when thousands of protesters converged on the Bank of England. Angry scenes there prompted police to cordon off the area, putting barriers up right across a number of streets. Police then attempted to move demonstration down Bartholomew Lane into Threadneedle Street. And it was here that a branch of the Royal Bank of Scotland was attacked. Windows were smashed, several people and a number of police officers injured there. And also a number of minor skirmishes at the climate camp which has been set up in Bishopsgate. Well, let's uh, find out the very latest. Stuart Ramsey is uh, still there in the city. Uh, a little bit of uh, trouble in the background by the looks of it, Stuart. Yeah, this, I'm in Queen Victoria Street and uh, I, it's either a shift change. I just spoke to a police officer, Jeremy, and he, I said, are you leaving? Because uh, a large number of uh, police trucks have moved forward. He says not. I, I suspect it is a shift change. He says it's good. This is going to be here for a very, very long time, was how he put it. And I think what's happened is that a number of the demonstrators dispersed and moved down towards, back towards the, the west end of London, out of the city. But they were causing trouble on the way, it appears. There was some throwing of, of bottles. It appears they tried to break up uh, at some window, so the police seem to have stopped them in their tracks and then, then marched them back, pushed them back uh, probably a good mile, maybe a mile and a half back down the road towards the Bank of England where they remain now and as I said that police officer seemed convinced that this was an operation that would go on for some, some time. Quite how you reach a decision as to who you disperse or where you disperse them or how you get them out I think will be, in, will be part of the planning that the police have put in place. Obviously as we get towards the end of the day that raises all sorts of issues, not least with people um, d dispersing and then causing trouble on the way. So I think we're in a holding pattern now and there's everything to, to suggest to me this could go on for, for a very long time indeed. There are thousands of people inside the square still, Jeremy, and uh, they're not being allowed to leave. I suppose it would be fair to say, Stuart, that probably 90% of the people who turned out to demonstrate today did so completely peacefully. It's a minority who have caused the trouble, and police probably were prepared for much worse than there's been so far. Yeah, I mean, this has been a huge police operation. Interestingly, Jeremy, it's been a huge operation on behalf of the demonstrators as well. All the various groups have come together to try and organise this. But definitely we saw the anarchist types from early on, uh, the masks on, the familiar black hoods, and there were a lot of them. Uh, some of them, I have to say, are just kids, however, not some of the hardcore that I've seen in, in European uh, incidents, if you like. But there's a lot of them. Now, what happened is, and as you say, most of the people inside the square would be uh, peaceful, but they get inside and there's a lot of pushing and shoving and they push back and they were, they were really pretty much hemmed in. So although they were there peacefully and they weren't actually attacking the police, both sides were pushing one another and of course it then can flare up every now and again and somebody gets hit. And what we did see of course were those who were definitely trying to cause problems. They would go, try to uh, goad the police into hitting them with batons etc and then, then as people flee you get that sort of sense of chaos that always happens when you have large groups of people and fighting develops and people push back and people fall over and somebody gets hurt and then somebody at the back throws a bottle and there's been a fair amount of that going on as you say it could have been a lot lot worse they have maintained the complete control actually uh, over the large numbers of people who came in and interestingly once they arrived at the Bank of England and were found themselves in square they were promptly stuck inside it and couldn't leave even if they wanted to there was some confrontation with others trying to get in but effectively the police just completely closed the whole place down. The demonstrations achieved what they wanted, which was, of course, uh, to bring to the city to a standstill, but of course it also meant that they were in a standstill too, and it looks like they're going to stay that way for some time.